Hi, sorry, this is Pedro from Box Miam. So I'll start by talk, uh, introducing a bit about Box. So uh, Box was founded in 2005 uh, by Dylan and Aaron Levy. Uh, they had a, a very specific challenge where they were working on a project together and they wanted to access content that was stored in lots of different places. And that's how uh, Box was uh, born. So the mission, uh, even back then, was around accessing content and making uh, businesses or staff more productive, competitive, and collaborative by connecting people with all the information that they need uh, to perform whatever role they've got. So since then, a box has actually grown quite a lot. We now have uh, over 225,000 uh, businesses using Box on a daily basis. Uh, over, uh, that includes over 250, uh, sorry, uh, 25 million new individual users, uh, both using the, uh, our paid account as, as well as our senior model. And some uh, very large companies. So currently we have 99% of the Fortune 500 using Box. And some of those uh, companies will be very familiar uh, to yourselves. So these range from uh, McAfee, who is, uh, for those of you who know, is a security organization uh, around antivirus encryptions and so forth. So for them, uh, using a secure platform was paramount. Uh, two uh, small organizations uh, that use a box to in, uh, improve the efficiency of their business. So I'd like to talk to you a bit about how companies actually utilize Box and some of those use cases. Uh, a lot of times we tend to see that people want to replace their existing infrastructure. So we'll use Box to consolidate their content, uh, replacing FTP servers, uh, file servers, uh, and other uh, storage solutions. So, so centralizing the content in Box so they can easily access it uh, using advanced features such as search, uh, automation, and metadata. A box can also be used for mobility. Um, we have changed the way we work. Nowadays, uh, people work a lot more on their tablets and mobile devices than they do on their desks using their uh, desktops. So it's paramount that everyone can access the content that's important for their roles uh, any time using any device. So Box has a suite of uh, apps that are native for iPhone, Android, uh, Windows device, and BlackBerry, as well as easy accessible uh, uh, web applications. These days, uh, collaboration is extremely important. So gone are the days where everyone collaborated within the office. Uh, most organizations now outsource and need to have um, access to information instantaneously, but also to collaborate uh, outside of email. So with Box, you can use features such as comments, so you can comment on your content directly, uh, avoiding to send, have to send uh, email attachments uh, when you need to change them to any content, and as well as set tasks. So you can keep track of progress or uh, specific projects. You can also access stats. Uh, so at any point, you can see who has, it, has viewed a document or performed an action such as download. So extremely important information when you're keeping track of a project or really seeing if someone has signed that all-important contract that you're waiting for. But Box can also become a platform. Uh, they'll integrate to your existing infrastructure. So Box can embed into your existing CRM or a ERP system. Uh, so providing a uh, seamless workflow for, to any task. And we'll cover that in a demo detail during the demo. So our customers uh, have seen a lot of value from Box. So um, from a, a recent uh, survey that we take, uh, we found out that uh, uh, most of our customers agreed that uh, by using Box, they save time on their projects and work. 
So this tends to be on a, the ease of access to information as well as not having to rely on uh, other communication tools such as email, uh, seeing as the content is easily accessible within Box and all the comments or communication can be, that can be done directly uh, within the content. Uh, Box has also been used, as I mentioned before, for mobility. So by having Box as the content platform makes it much easier uh, to move uh, to a mobile strategy uh, knowing that the content is in a secure and easy to us access service such as Box. And as well communication within uh, the organization. Using tools such as Box Embed, uh, you can have the content that needs to be delivered to specific project pages, for example, as well as using the communication uh, such as our Commons uh, interface within Box. And most of all, really around sharing externally. Being able to give access to your uh, contractors, uh, external agencies uh, to content and being able to work on that content together to complete projects uh, in a timely fashion. So I'd like to uh, move on to our demo and actually show you how Vox uh, works uh, and a couple of the use cases that we mentioned. So what we see here is just a Windows machine uh, and the box web application. So I haven't done any branding in this case, I just wanted to keep it quite simple. So once the user logs into box, they'll have access to all of the content that they have access. So uh, the yellow folders denominate as being private and blue folders are collaborative folders. So these are shared and multiple people have access to them. And here I can see the collaborators. Uh, gray folders are folders that are collaborative, but are owned by someone outside of the organization. So these are external folders. So today we're going to go through into the DocuSign folder here, and I'm going to upload a couple of documents. So I've got an Illustrator file that I can just simply drag and drop uh, and go straight onto Box and these NDA contract that we'll be uh, accessing as well. So notice how the content is uploaded uh, very quickly and it's also encrypted uh, on upload. Once uh, the content is within box, we can preview it within the web application. So no need to actually download the file afterwards. So box generates a preview on demand. Uh, so when it's shared, or anyone access it, uh, sees the information straight away. So once to the use case where we've got this contract and now I perhaps would like uh, for it to be signed. So I could initiate that process from within box, more actions, and I could get it signed uh, via DocuSign. But with Box, I could actually integrate and or do this whole process within uh, my CRM, for example, or my ERP. So um, let's discuss the use case where uh, we're a sales organization and I've got a contract that's uh, related to Acme, so that's my customer, and I need this contract to be sent off and signed. Uh, as we saw before, I can just drag it and drop it onto the box folder. So I'll just repeat the process. And then I'll want it to be signed and the signed copy to be sent back to the same location. So everything stays within the same record. So as we saw within box, I can do the same functionality on the Salesforce embed. So right now I'm calling up the uh, integration with DocuSign. It'll pick up the document and it'll match it against any uh, existing template that I might have. I can apply that template. I'll just maximize it a tiny bit. And straight away understand uh, what requirements I have for this document. So a signature, full name, the job title, and the date that it was signed. It's already preloaded. Pre who the recipient is. So all I have to do is press send. Okay. 
and the document has now been uh, sent to Philip. So I'm going to uh, change control of the demo to Philip, who will be able to uh, show what the recipient uh, would see from the document. Thank you very much, Pedro. So you've just seen how easy it is to send a document via electronic signature from Box itself or even Salesforce itself. You will see in real time at 12 minutes past two this afternoon, Pedro sent an email, a DocuSign envelope in DocuSign vernacular to my email to sign. So really keen to show you how easy it is to sign that document. So first and foremost, Pedro works the box. The contract that Pedro has just sent me is clearly branded as coming from box. Obviously you're using DocuSign and DocuSign is providing the legal signature here. But really important that you can reflect your own company's logos and brands. You can see there's even generic messages there, simple instructions telling the signer what they need to do. And always remember here at this point, DocuSign is an electronic signature, which is designed to make it easier for individuals or organizations to do business with your own respective organization. So at this point, I hit view document. And it will present the document for me to sign. Again, at the top of the screen here, you see more box branding because box are the sender or the originator for this document. I have a couple of different options. I could decline to sign, have to give a reason or I could review, or I could look at the document and decide to finish later. We're not going to go into great detail today, but it is important at this point to note that the sender has visibility as to whether the document that Pedro sent me, if I viewed it or not. On top of that, the system also sends automatic reminders to the signer or signers um, after a day, two days, three days, a period of time that you control, reminding them to send the doc um, to sign the document. So if I didn't sign it today, um, that obviously would be great for this webinar perspective, but waited to tomorrow, I would receive a reminder in my inbox tomorrow morning reminding me to sign a contract. As Pedro was saying, great for sales contracts. As salespeople like myself obviously like contracts to come back in through the door. So at this point, I'm going to select a few documents. You see here, I can track my physical location. I'm going to say allow once. And I can either scroll through the document, or I can click next and take me to the part of the document where I need to sign. A great thing about DocuSign, the sending organization, in, and this is Box and Pedro in this case, they set up the DocuSign template telling the customer or the signer or signers where they need to sign the document. What this does is it eradicates not in good order documents or error strewn documents. Organizations being able to manually strike out clauses. This is a lock PDF. The only part that they can fill in information is the sign name pre-populated or job title. So for instance, I could change my job title to the full title of account executive. And now the signing perspective. So signing is slightly different. Um, important to say here that you can sign on any internet enabled device. So just like Pedro talked about earlier with Box, with DocuSign, um, you could use standard laptop, desktop, you know, PC or Mac, you could use iOS, Android, Windows, or even BlackBerry to sign your devices, to sign your documents. So from a signing perspective, in its simplest form, I have a couple of different options. I could choose to draw my signature. Now I'm just using a mouse here and it doesn't look great. Most people don't do that. 
unless they're on a mobile device. If you're on a mobile device such as an iPad, DocuSign automatically recognizes the device you're on and enables you to scribble your signature, for want of a better description, by a finger or stylus. But what most people do, and I would say 90% of our signing audience, they select the signature style. Now, I'll always caveat here, I'm not a lawyer, but a signature is sign, symbol, mark, or sound is a consent to sign a document. The most important is actually this unique reference number at the bottom. A signature could be a smiley face, um, it could be a line, it could be a kiss or, or an X. Completely up to you. But I select the signature I wish to adopt as my signature, and I go adopt and sign. Vital to remember here that it has to be simple to sign documents. And just like using Box and Salesforce and DocuSign in conjunction, it has to be simple to send these documents out as well. So at that point, I hit Confirm Signing. At this stage, sender and signer receive a copy back via email and also back into Box and Salesforce as well. What's also important to say at this point, I talked about branding. You can actually take customers back to websites of your choosing. Now, <coughs> excuse me, as Box sent this document, Box are advertising their upcoming Business Without Boundaries event, which actually is this time next week, or actually this time next Tuesday, uh, at Park Plaza in London, and more of the Box event and DocuSign event later on. But it really shows you how organizations and branded documents that they send out for signature. So at this point, I'm just temporarily going to give controls back to Pedro to show you what it looks like when the signed document is reposited back into Box or Salesforce. Thank you very much, Phil. So uh, here we are. We can now see that the signed copy of the document is on the same folder as the original Word document. So I can actually click on that document and it will generate the preview and now I can see the signed copy. Just saying a refresh version, there we are. The advantage of using a box for this solution as well is that now I can start communicating uh, around that document uh, with Phil, for example. So I've added him as a collaborator, so I could just uh, thank him for sending the signed copy. And I could then set up maybe a task to one of my colleagues to review the document or co-sign it if needed as well. So it, it, Box enables the uh, secure distribution of the, of the documents, having a signed copy, and then working through your work, uh, workflow and approval process, uh, all just using Box. And that can be natively within the application, so the same document shows up natively in Box, or embedded into something like Salesforce, as we saw on our example. And with that, I'll pass back control uh, to Phil, who will tell you a bit more about DocuSign itself. Thank you. Thank you again, Pedro. Um, so hopefully you saw how easy it is to send documents, store documents within Box, and then how easy it is for your customers or your internal members of staff to sign documents with DocuSign. So at this point, just wanted to talk a little bit about DocuSign and give you a bit of history before we talk about a joint DocuSign and Box um, case study. So first and foremost, a little bit about DocuSign as a business. Uh, not too dissimilar to Box, we were founded uh, in 2003, just a couple of years before Box itself. So we've been in business for well over 10 years now. Um, we have as we're a global organization with over 188 countries DocuSigned. So what that means is 
signers have signed in 188 different countries globally. We have over 110,000 customers from a range of industries. The great thing about DocuSign, and really our business objective, is to eliminate paper and enable individuals or organizations to sign anywhere, anytime, on any device. Uh, we're also very happy to state that the analysts, the likes of Gartner and Forrester, state that DocuSign are the leader in the electronic signature and digital transaction management marketplace. So what I'm just showing you here is a little bit about the explosion or growth of electronic signature over the last few years. You will see that we started out, no one was really signing on a mobile device, but as of the start of this year, most of Europe and North America are all signing on mobile devices, also clumps in South America, South Africa, and Australia as well. So you can really see here that DocuSign is a global solution, and people are using this in all major business hubs all around the world. So at this point, keen to talk as well about customer aspirations. Why do businesses come to DocuSign in order to find out more about electronic signature? And why do they try and use electronic signature within their organization? So first and foremost, it's the need to gain better visibility into the contract status. You send a contract out today, maybe via email or via post, and yes, you could have recorded delivery or read receipts in email. But once it actually gets to its destination, you really have no idea where that document is. With DocuSign, you're able to see if your signer or signers have viewed the document. If there's more than one signature in the transaction, for instance, uh, Pedro sends me that document, then it goes to another one of my colleagues to execute the final signature. If I'd signed that they hadn't, DocuSign gives you the history and feasibility into that process, as well as sending the automatic reminders as well. Furthermore, a lot of businesses out there, um, and when we're talking sales contracts, or maybe we're even talking HR departments, um, looking to use DocuSign for employment letters, employment offer letters, it's the need to improve customer satisfaction. Not everyone has a printer. Not everyone has a scanner um, in their homes. Not, a lot of people definitely don't have fax machines anymore. Even in their offices, um, the fax machine is, is almost dead in a lot of occasions. So if you can send out a contract for signature electronically, via electronic signature, customers are really impressed, and it makes it a lot easier for them to do business with you. Again, and so much on, along those lines, the need to simplify the process. Print, scan, post, fax, email. It's quite a complicated process. DocuSign makes it simple, enables signers to sign wherever they are in the world. The great thing, of course, is executing contracts faster. If you use the post or good old-fashioned snail mail, as it could be called, it could take a day, two days to get to your customer, especially um, for global transactions. With DocuSign, it can get to customers in a matter of minutes and um, can then be sent back straight to, the, straight to the sending party. A lot of people, uh, and we talked about this a few times already, are keen to transact by mobile devices. It's vitally important that you can send and sign with DocuSign, and of course use Box as well, via mobile devices. And lastly, um, and this is a joint webinar in collaboration with Box, really important that businesses are keen to integrate their business tools with a number of existing systems. The, de the demo that Pedro and I just carried out hopefully showed you how DocuSign can tie in with DocuSign, Box, Salesforce, and many other systems.
So at this point, just keen to talk to you about the different departments that can use DocuSign. So a lot of people think that DocuSign is just for sales agreements or NDAs, but actually that's not the case. Organizations all around the world use us in the HR space, in the procurement space, in the legal departments, within support, within their marketing departments. <laughs> DocuSign really can be used in any department and in any different type of organization as well. So when I talk about um, different departments and also different organizations, it's important to state that of DocuSign's 110,000 customers, we have businesses that could be in the real estate or property industry, uh, UK letting and estate agents such as Leaders and Your Move and Romans and Dexas that you may know. High tech organizations, Box of course use DocuSign, Salesforce, Microsoft, SAP, it could be telco businesses like T-Mobile or Comcast or Vodafone or O2 all use the DocuSign um, system. Businesses such as Unilever, uh, Consumer Goods, Red Bull, Halford, businesses like Spurgeon Holidays and Expedia, household brands who operate across a range of different industries all use DocuSign. So at this point, as we're coming to the end of the demo and presentation this afternoon, I'd like to flag up a shared DocuSign and Box customer. So the Dragon School, a prestigious school in the Oxfordshire region, um, a private school who have been going for hundreds of years, started to use Box around a year and a half ago, and within the last six months have rolled out DocuSign. The challenge that the Dragon School had is the fast amount of paperwork that they had to store and also be completed by parents of the students at the school. It was a very cumbersome process in getting forms completed. Excessive printing and postage costs uh, to actually get some of these forms. Maybe it was enrollment, maybe it was permissions to go on school trips, etc. to the parents themselves. Or, um, if it wasn't for boarding school attendees, generally giving a form back to a student and they take it to your parents, it doesn't always get there. So using DocuSign, um, you are able to, one, store your documents within Box, so there's a central repository, and then use DocuSign and Box in conjunction to send out the documents for signature makes it really simple. As we talked about, you can send forms directly from Box, and that's what the Dragon School are doing, and they can eliminate the traditional processes of scan, fax, paper, emailing, and then making it really easy for parents and guardians to sign documents and return them back into Box, as the demo showed earlier on. So at this point, um, really just like to flag first and foremost the Box Business Without Boundaries event which is taking place at Park Plaza in London next week. Um, you're still able to register for that event and the Box team would love uh, your attendance there. And also from my perspective and um, being a DocuSign rep, DocuSign recently embarked on their European City Tour and we just had a couple of UK events. But we're going um, across the world and in the next couple of couple of months. So please join us or think about joining us in these locations if you reside in any of these venues. And at this point, really keen to open up the session to questions. Okay. Uh, thanks, Paul, for that. Uh, just a quick thing. So, um, Phil, are you managed to? Are you able to go back to that? Uh, case study slide for a bit, just for a quick second, if that's okay. I think Pedro may want to just have a few comments on that, just to 
reiterate some few points on the box points. Uh, yeah. So um, it's just really that the Dragon School I are using Box as the, the central storage uh, solution. So they do send a lot of kind of forms and information to parents, uh, but uh, it's also used as a way of the staff to actually plan activity, plan lessons, and as well do things like a lot of uh, admin uh, tasks. So from uh, the uh, student applications, that will actually come through and go onto Box. Students then get a Box account uh, where they will receive information about the school. Uh, so things like the curriculum as well, uh, just general information from kind of timetables uh, and uh, kind of procedures and policies. Uh, and it's always up to date. So as he mentions here, it, it does cut costs in things like printing and uh, postage, but also by using DocuSign to enforce people to sign the documents, then we can monitor that everyone always has the latest policies uh, as per, per school, and everyone uh, always has the latest information. So it's a, a very kind of uh, great use case around keeping parents, students, and staff informed by using Box for the easy access of the information and DocuSign as the kind of legal binding uh, tool that shows that uh, people have actually read it and agreed to, the, to any changes that might have happened. Brilliant. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro, for that. It's good to see both aspects of both Box and DocuSign being used there. Um, so as Phil said, uh, we're going to move on to questions. And Pedro, while I still have you um, online, I'm just going to there's a question that's come through for you. Um, are there any storage limits with Box? Uh, no. So if you have a, a paid Box account, uh, you can store as much content in Box as you want. So we offer unlimited storage. Great question. Okay. Thank you. Um, guys, again, if you have any questions, uh, you can just enter those through the Q&A function. Um, so with, uh, well, this is a bit of a, a Box and DocuSign question anyway, but I think you can answer this. Is there a copy of the document stored in Box and DocuSign? Yeah, no, absolutely. So a copy is stored back into Box and also um, is kept in DocuSign if you wish it to be. You could also set your DocuSign retention to purely store in Box if you wish. Okay, so does DocuSign also keep a history of these? Yeah, no, absolutely. So DocuSign keeps a history of each signature transaction. So it lets you know who the originator of the document is. Who signed the document? Was it one party? Was it multiple parties? What authentication methods they used, including the IP address and the access code that they used to access the document? That could be simple simple email, as we demonstrated, but you could go further with different levels of authentication, such as access code or SMS or phone authentication. And the DocuSign history and certificate of completion shows all of that. We also show how many pages the document was as well. So detailed history and audit trail with the DocuSign solution. Okay, perfect. Um, a box questions come through as well. Is the content encrypted? Uh, yes. So all the content that's uploaded to box is encrypted in transit and then uh, also uh, at rest. So it's secure and you can only access by actually authenticating onto box. Uh, good question. Okay. And will there, are there any file limitations or file type limitations as well, Pedro? Um, no, oh, so uh, any file can be stored in box. Uh, the only limitation is in terms of the, the file, that, the number of files that we preview. So uh, for preview is limited at 120 different file types. So that includes uh, all the, the Word or Microsoft Office document suites, uh, as well as most common uh, audio and media file types. So more than enough to cover most uh, users' needs. Okay. Um, I have one more question for DocuSign, which is, can the system send out reminders to signers? I think you briefly touched that, Phil. 
Yeah, no, absolutely. So DocuSign reminders can be set by the sender or the sending organization. So you could chase them as much as every day on an automatic manner, and you can manually resend the document as many times as you want. So you could theoretically resend that document every hour, but that would be manual. But reminders are daily or or every other day, etc. Perfect. So with time, I think we have one more question to hold on. Um, so Pedro, last question for you. Um, does Box support single sign-on? Uh, yes, it does. So uh, Box will support single sign-on via your kind of active directory, federated services, or other uh, identity provider systems, uh, including Salesforce. So it makes it nice and seamless so that the user logs on to their uh, local desktop and straight away get access to Box without needing to authenticate again. Perfect. Um, so with that, I think that's all the time we have. Um, again, I can see a few more questions have come through and we will definitely get through those um, offline. Um, there are the contact details here for DocuSign and Box. Again, a, re a recording will be sent to you um, later this week. So. With that, I'd like to thank you for attending. Thank you.